Allegheny Lutheran. I'm here to see Ben. Ben has finished his two uh, first custom guitars. So let's go check him out. I also, I brought three guitars for him to check out. So uh, there's a lot going on today. Welcome to uh, Monterey, Virginia. Benjamin. Hey there. Hey, this is Ben. Hey there. Ben, you finished two guitars, huh? I did. Dude, they look so freaking good. Welcome to uh, Allegheny Luthery and Paget Guitars. This is Ben Paget. We've become fast friends because we both freaking love acoustic guitars. Ben has built two guitars, and I was over here a couple months ago. So, Ben, tell us a little bit about which one's which and, and why these were your first two. Well, they're both Model 1s, Honduran, Genuine Mahogany. This one is Coca Bolo. Uh, back and sides, both of them are spruce tops. And they're 25 and a half inch scale length, 25 right? and a half inch scale length, 13 frets to the body. Um, That's an interesting choice. Why'd you do 13 frets? So 12 fret guitars drive that main monopole back a little bit more. So where you're pulling on the top is, is more centered into the active area of the top. 12 frets, I'm sure a lot of people say they kind of sound a little boomier, a little more present. And that's because of that, because you're drawing that further back to the center. So if so, you're sitting from the center of the round part of the body, yeah. if you can get the bridge closer to the center, yeah, closer, yeah, you'll get the most... Yeah, kind of like, I always you know, make analogies to playing drums, but if you have a drum, you hit it, you don't necessarily hit it right in the center, but you hit it close to the center. And if you look at the active area of a guitar, which is not the sound hole and shoulder, so this bottom lower bout, um, you know, a 14 fret, 25.5, would be another fret closer to the shoulders, right? Okay. So it'd be a little bit, you're not driving as much of the top, I guess. Man, I've never heard, I've been around guitars for a long time, and I've never even thought about that or heard anyone talk about that. Um, I'll be honest, <laughs> I have sneaked, I've played these guitars already. Because uh, it was just a thing, I just, I walked into the room, had to play them. Mm -hmm. um, but they're amazingly bassy for what should be a smaller... Like in my mind, smaller guitar, smaller tone. Yeah. Um, but these guitars have tons of bass. So has anyone else done a 13 fret? Tyler Robbins of Robbins Acoustics, who I worked with and I'm good buddies with up in um, the Gallup shop. He builds for Gallup and he builds his own guitars there too. And I believe Sam Gidry, who again came out of that yeah. school. So a lot of those people, it's a good blend. So, you know, you, you allow yourself one extra fret of playability you kind of get more of that depth and boominess that you would get out of like a 12 fret or something. So it's really cool hearing you talk about other builders that are coming out of the Gallup School, which I have to admit, I didn't know the Gallup School very well before I met you, mm -hmm. but since meeting you, I've looked into it, and what is so cool is you're seeing all of these new builders coming into the guitar building world, and so in, in one way, there's a new generation of guitar builders coming out. Yeah. Um, but there's also an entirely new generation of guitar coming out like what i find really exciting about these is that they don't feel totally like fast forward 100 years in guitars they mm -hmm. feel like the next thought the next evolution small subtle changes but they make for more playable instruments and they're they feel more playful because i think i mean i'm not a particularly big guy uh mm -hmm. like and even when i play a dreadnought it still feels it's big that's a yeah. big guitar so it's interesting, like, why don't you think more builders in your space are building dreadnoughts? I think it's just because it's it's been done a million times before, and, and a lot of other people are doing it really well. I So I used to make archtop instruments, or I would teach the archtop term when I was at Gallup, and I really like that whole aspect of an archtop instrument and carving it by hand, and that's a very traditional kind of realm. So I miss that, and I've been thinking about getting back into a mandolin. Oh, and when I was... Mandolin. What's that? I'll take a mandolin. You'll take a mandolin. Sounds good. Uh, I've had multiple people ask me about them, and I, I would really like to get, get into that. And at the same time, you know, around here, 
when people play D18s and D28s because they're in the bluegrass. So everyone wants a F-style Gibson, F-style mandolin. And those are great, but there's a million builders that make dreadnoughts. There's a million builders that make amazing F-style things. So, you know, um, <laughs> I'm not going to make bullback, you know, potato bugs, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, maybe something more in the A, A kind of style. Just uh, it's something I'll have to, to feel out. You know, I want them to feel maybe as uh, similar and different enough um, from an F-style or an A-style as these do to a dreadnought or a jumbo or... Um, or an OM, you know, okay. so. Well, I, I think the coolest thing is that to get that big full tone doesn't have to come from a dreadnought. It can come from a bigger body. Like, I like adding space on the backside. It's yeah. not messing with your arm. It's not messing with the proximity to the guitar. Yeah. And so you get a huge tone out of these. Now, um, the other thing is, so there are all these paint cans back behind us, mm -hmm. but I, there's not a spray booth here. How'd you finish these? So no spray booth. I... Finish these with uh, doing French polished shellac. Uh, this is my first. I've done some test pieces in the past, but this is my first uh, real experience with it. And I mean, that's why people say it's an art. It, it's uh, it's not easy, and it, it definitely kicked my butt on this one. There's a fine line in French polishing between applying finish and removing it, and it's just how wet your pad is. You could very easily just strip it off. And I did on these a couple mm -hmm. times. So it took me a while to be able to, uh, to, to do it, you know? Yeah. And so this video is going to live on in perpetuity. That's the beautiful part of YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll talk about prices now, but this is what may end of May, 2021. So all of this is subject to change, but where ballpark are you going to be on these? And then are you taking orders moving forward? How can people get in touch with you? Yes, I am taking orders moving forward. Uh, I already have taken some orders. I have uh, three that I'll be working on over the next eight months or so. As far as price goes, my baseline price is 3500 uh, which may not include uh, certain things. Like I'll never, probably never do the um, mosaic style um, inlay again as far as the rosette and the unless you pay unless you pay a little extra for it I, I mean that took me a pretty long time um it's a lot of materials the black purfling in between is uh is actually ebony that i had to process into little strips um the dyed stabilized uh ash burl is not not that it's beautiful but it's not the cheapest stuff so there's a lot there's a lot to go, that goes into it so i would um that would definitely add an expense. And it is, I mean, it, it has to be said, $3,500 is an amazing price for a custom built guitar using such high quality materials from someone that is so knowledgeable and such just a, a complete maniac. Is that the wrong word? <laughs> you can call me a maniac. That's just fine. a master of um, meticulously detail oriented. And every guitar will be better than the last one. So, anyway, uh, I'm so excited about these. I think it's time to play them. I think people want to hear them. So, mm -hmm. uh, let's dig in. I'm going to jump into the mahogany one first. And uh, so, we'll play both of these guitars. And then, last information, uh, contact. How do people get in touch with you? Contact. So, I'm on Instagram. As far as the guitar builds go, you can find most of the updates uh, on the builds um, at, uh, at Paget Guitars. And then as far as the Allegheny Luthery is like my repair business and the shop and everything. So um, repair stuff will be uh, at Allegheny underscore Luthery. Um, I have websites for both, AlleghenyLuthery.com and PagetGuitars.com. Emails and phone numbers are included on, on those, those things as well. So.